This is the CFPC's largest attachment, home to elite units from federal and municipal scope. Congratulations on making the cut. We've trained a dozen rooks. We'll miss the hell out of you. Can we say I have a few months left? I want to see this one through. I want you to focus on the tradition you're carrying on. That's our legacy. It's a good time to be you. I worked for what I got. People are going to come at you whatever way they can. Out there, no baggage. Out there, you're not you. You're this. This job has one rule. You follow orders. Are you ready to discover the high-octane excitement of paperwork? Hold me back. Hoorah. Hello there. I'm really enjoying Allegiance. Um, it's unexpected. It's, it's very fresh in its attitude. But I think what I'm really enjoying the most is the generational sort of gap between the two of you, which so they're both so loaded with their issues and yet they come together and work so well. Whereas the male police of your generation, Supinder, are not that way. So it's good. It's good to have a veteran. <laughs> Supinder, this is for you. Uh, TV's first feminists were detectives and police officers. Um, and I, that was like 50 years ago and they were quite common on TV, but here you are all these years later, still dealing with overt sexism in a police station. If you would comment on that. Uh, like other than Luke, I don't know that it feels overt. Um, and I think that in, in terms of the, um, aggression that comes at Sabrina, you know, on her first day of work, mm -hmm. I, I think that the thing that's confusing for her is that it's not an experience, surprisingly, that she's really dealt with before. Mm. And I mm. think that one of the, the things that we've talked about and Anara Lee, who created the show, really, you know, sort of wanted to look at is, um, what, is what, does, what are the biases that exist in our system, especially in Canada, look like? Because they're, they're not necessarily overt. Right. It's that feeling of like, is, are people mm. talking behind my back? Are am, am I actually an equal? You know, and so sometimes it comes out in the one character that we have, Tucker, where he says, you know, it's a good time to be you right now or indicates to her so much so that she got the position she got because of who her father is and because of the privileges she has. And I think that one of Sabrina's flaws is that she's not aware of the privileges that she has. Um, and I. And I think it's it's kind of nice, you know, and it's kind of heartbreaking when she, when she, she does kind of realize, you know, what she's been been the benefactor for and what her her position really is. But in terms of um, in terms of her coming into the force as a woman of color, I, I the thing that really drew to me to the story and I thought was really interesting is that she thinks she's going to enter under all of these privileges. You know, her father is high up in the police force. He's well regarded. She's top of her class. She's valedictorian. She's been placed in the, the elite unit. She's, she's got it all, right? And then this devastating thing happens. Her father is charged with treason. And she's got to come into the police force under, under the stink of his, his reputation. That's a great word. Yeah, that's a lot to deal with, I must yeah. say. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, and it's going to be a rich mine, I guess, as the series goes forward. Um, a very rich mine. Enrico, you've done so much work in a short period of time, but I just want to mention one moment uh, in the series when your character's back from concussion leave and his boss offers him retirement, basically. The look on your face, it's a few seconds long, but it it just goes through the gamut of emotions. It's just so powerful and meaningful. Do you, you don't you don't remember, eh? Because it, it was a few. It was a like few a beautiful, beats. A beautiful. Scene. I know they were they were short on time in the episode, so they needed to add a scene in there, and I you know was a lucky guy to just get the scene that would add to the show, right? And it was between yeah. David Cubitt and I, and I got the, had the benefit of seeing Supinder in the distance while she was having a little moment there. But it was a beautiful moment where I was, I needed to decide whether I was serious about retirement or I wanted to stick it out with this, uh, with you know, protege. with this, the, with this rookie. And um, yeah, yes. No, I think now, I, beautiful. It was it, a beautiful. It was memorable. I'm glad. I'm glad they. I can't wait to see it. Is what I'm saying. You're dealing with uh, far right extremists, 
And I guess we have to admit, particularly since uh, the convoy and other things, that um, those sentiments exist in not just in the US, but up here. And it's shocking and it's unexpected. Is that something that you'll be following through the series? Because I, it, I mean, it's really timely. I think through the course of the season, yeah, it is definitely something that the the story continues to follow. And I think that you know, while we are looking at what a generalized view of terrorism or treason or you know people who are against a country, what the face of that looks like, I think it was really interesting and a, and a, and a really smart decision to explore so many different sides of, you know, extremism. Yes, and sad From a time. Canadian perspective as well, and from a Canadian perspective, you know, I think the world is waking up to, you know, we're not so clean, you know? We've got blood on our hands. There's something nefarious going on within the Canadian system, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not immune to you know, bias, we're not immune to prejudice, we're not immune to racism. We're not, we're not what we thought we were portraying in the world as good, good Canadians. It's like, yes. And this show and to suggest that there is, there is this nefarious sort of underworld trying to overthrow or just manipulate the system is just like, that's new to Canadian audiences, I think. It's usually... Yeah, indicative of American sure. shows, and but not to Canadian shows. So we're kind of yeah, kind of cool. yeah. but we're dealing. The with times that. they are a changing. Are there plans to sell the show yet abroad? Because I think it would be terrific to 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 do so and to show our talent and our stories and our country. You know the the beauty of the backdrop behind Surrey. Well, we I, hope so. I hope. I mean, you know, we hope, but we don't know. Right now, it's uh, it's exclusive to to Canada. So, right now we yes. are we just, proudly on the CBC. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I appreciate speaking to you both so much, and I look forward to more episodes. Congratulations! I think you've nailed it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Anne. much. Anne. Thank you. Thank you. I would rather be baroque than blue. There's lots of reasons to not be a cop. A Surrey girl should know all of them. We coming for you and everyone like you. We even got people in your goddamn police force. Let me look at you. I'll see you in there. Some people are given grace. Some people get the benefit of the doubt. But not us. Have you spoken with your father? I know how hard it is when your family is taken from you. Stay away. Just talk to me. Someone wanted these ideas to spread. All it takes is a spark. This is my legacy. The crown is grasping at straws, trying to weave them into some kind of treason basket. Maybe you should reconsider the uniform and everything that it represents. I'd rather fight from inside it to make a change. How do I look? Like a cop. This is my legacy.